All right. Um, so today we are going to cover these four parts. One is uh, I will start with the hiring manager's perspective because I was one and I help uh, current managers are doing this uh, to give you, you know, the job seekers a perspective or a different view uh, from the other side, what they are looking for. Then we will talk about uh, interview skills for success. What are some strategies? What are some skills? Then we go really specific to Today's uh, the core part is how to answer some of those very common interview questions so that uh, you would be able to show up in, in one side, be yourself, right? Uh, who you are, you can uh, answer, through answering those questions. But on the other side, there are a lot of uh, strategies, skills that you, if you know, then you can do better and you can impress the employer. And at the very end, um, like uh, many of the interviews, the employer will ask you, uh, what questions you want to ask me? So what kind of things you want to ask the uh, interviewers to impress them so that they, uh, you leave a very deep impress and they would like to hire you. All right, uh, I will start with the first part. The first section is the hiring manager's perspective. I have hired people and I've helped so many managers on that and I train them. Uh, one thing I want to let you know is a, it's not just you, if you are looking for a job, you are being selected or <laughs> uh, you are there being uh, picked by them. It's also you want to select the right employer. You are selected the right manager for you and the right team. So it's two way. On one side, the hiring manager, they want to fill in the position as soon as possible because this is what happens. When a job opens, they, the hiring manager got the resource and they want to, and they have the work there. They want to find people who are capable to do the work and um, take over that work so that the team can deliver. That's the manager's responsibility. The manager needs to lead the team, deliver the, uh, the projects, the tasks. They need to do this. On the other side, they also need to develop people. They want their people be, uh, be happy. They want the people contribute to the company and they are being evaluated by the, their employees in their team. So, for them, they want to fill in the position as soon as possible. But on the other side, they need to be really careful to hire the right person. Why? Because it's easier to hire people uh, than compared to fire people. If somebody hires someone that they, at the end, they think this is not the right person, it's really hard for them to let this person go. There's lots of uh, rules, reg regulations, especially for big companies. For smaller companies, it's a lot easier. Uh, in, in big companies like Microsoft, like Google, and uh, you know those big ones, they, the hiring managers uh, and the people who are the interviewers, they will get uh, some training on how to do the interview. They need to be very clear on what are the things they are um, asking, what kind of questions they can ask and what kind of questions they should not ask. So they got this kind of training and they also uh, get training on, well, what are some qualities, right? You should really identify from this person or something that you should uh, raise if you see that this is a red, uh, red flag, right? We need to be really careful. So that's uh, some basic stuff they have and they have probably sometimes a checklist or if not a checklist physically holding, they would have it in their head because they get some training on that. The other thing is when you are interviewing with companies, usually it's not just with the hiring manager, it's not one person, but the hiring manager has a really big say in, okay, you know, I would like this person or I say no to this person. Usually it's a team of, for example, Microsoft or Google is five, six people, uh, a lot. And you get in those interviews, each interviewer would evaluate if this is the person 
uh, fits this role or if this is the person I say yes to hiring or no to hiring. So they will do this uh, type of paperwork at the very back. And uh, a lot of times there's an internal system for them to do this. Uh, as soon as they finish their interview, they will fill in some uh, information to uh, make a team decision. But again, the hiring manager has the final say, even if everybody says, well, I think this is the right person. If the manager thinks no, then the manager can say no and the person will not be hired. Um, a lot of times if six, six people, maybe uh, one or two person says, no, I don't, we don't think, I don't think this is the right person. The, the decision may be a no, but the hiring manager can say, well, I still want this person. I still think this is the right person. So it still goes. So that's uh, the basic uh, you and uh, for you to understand the process and what it happens on the other side of this fence. Then what are the things they're looking for? Well, basically, first they look at if you are qualified to this job. This is based on the job description. You know, there's the qualification, right? Usually in the job description, they will talk about what this job is, what are the uh, tasks or the things, right? Uh, they need the person be able to do. And then they will list the qualification. And the qualifications, I would say, I always say it's a wish list because this is how, at least how we train our managers at Microsoft. Uh, usually we would put, the managers would put the must have at the top. And then there are some things can be the, their wish. Um, it can be something nice to have or they prefer, or sometimes they don't use these words, but for them, it's not the deal breaker for high, higher or not higher. It is something that they really hope they can find people like that. But because they write down all these things they wish to have, they know it's pretty hard to find people 100% match to the list. This means for you as the person looking for the job, if you think, well, of the 10 things, I have maybe eight match and the two not, and these two are not on the very top ones, well, I would encourage you still go and apply. The worst thing is you don't get a chance, right? But what if it's just a wish? So that's the first thing. Uh, qualification, especially the uh, hard skills is easy to identify uh, through the test or all these kind of things. But uh, um, there are some more like a qualitative kind of things is, or soft skills is harder to identify. So people will look through the interviews. They will ask questions. They will um, have this conversation with you and identify if you have those kind of soft skills. Okay. Question number two, big question, really, really big question. Because the hiring manager and the team, uh, whoever is interviewing, um, they will think about, are you a good fit to the team? And this is a, such a general question. <laughs> what is a good fit? That includes uh, the team culture, right? the team uh, current uh, mix of different people, the diversity and uh, inclusive side of things. Uh, many soft things and people really have a hard time to describe what is a good fit, what is not. It may come from their gut feelings. It may come from just, the, you know, when they have the conversation with you, um, when they talk with you, they, they know, they, they identify, okay, what kind of person you are besides the skills. And then uh, they get the feeling, okay, if you are a good a good addition to their team. So are you a good fit to the team? It's always something constantly in people's mind. Are you engaged in the process? What do I mean here? Well, if you are applying for many jobs and sometimes the people, they apply for this job, they are not that, that interested in it. They just use it as a practice, or maybe they already have some other um, options and they were just, uh, you know, give it a try and they do not know much about the company. And in the, in this process, in the interview, people on the other side can sense that they know, they can feel that if you are really interested in this job, 
in this company, in the team, or you are just trying to, you know, go through this and uh, practice, <laughs> or maybe even you go through it and you may not want to come. So they can sense that, which is very important for you as a interviewer, uh, interviewee want to get a job. You want to show you are truly genuinely interested in this job or in the company and you are very enthusiastic about uh, joining them uh, or about this opportunity having the interviews all right and there are some other questions each team have different things um, but especially for graduates you know for the students i would think are you able to learn fast is a really important question uh, for the hiring managers or for the people who are interviewing you because they know that you come out right from school what you learn from school is not enough for the for the for that specific job they do not expect you can just come in and take over everything and just run by yourself when companies hire students uh, the, the people uh, the students that right from school uh, from university they have the expectations that the students come in, the students will be trained and uh, will learn, then they will take some time to ramp up and then they will be able to slowly right, uh, take over uh, or working on these things independently. So the, it, instead of trying to see if you can really do the job today, they have these expectations that uh, you cannot do it right today, but you do you have the foundation, the, the basic skills that you would be able to, uh, for example, if you are applying for a developer job, do you have the coding skills, right? Uh, they want to know this and they also want to know, are you a person that you are able to learn really fast? Uh, are you a person that you would work really hard to learn fast? So these kind of things they want to know. And beyond that, there are some other things. Uh, I want, um, I would say in companies like Microsoft, because we are promoting growth mindset. So we want to see if you are open-minded, if you are curious, if you are a, a person that wants to grow and learn. And we also want to see how do you handle failures? Because when you just come in, a lot of things you don't know. And when you start the job, you will start to know what you don't know. And th there are times people crash. <laughs> they just say, oh, I know nothing. Oh, this is so hard, right? They face the failures uh, in their first job. So we want to see how people handled it. Are you able to face the failure? And then, you know, you know it's hard, but uh, you would be able to just, uh, just uh, take it and learn from it. So those are some things that we want to look uh, through the interview. We want to see how you are. Okay, so that's the first part. Then after you know the manager's side, we are looking at the skills. The interview skills, some general tips for, for you to think about uh, how to develop the uh, answer, you know, your answers. Well, first you want to know the company. I already mentioned this means you are interested in the job. Uh, you want to do some research through your the company's website, through their social media pages, through articles. You know, know what's going on, uh, their news release, right? And you want to know the company mission and the vision and the values, uh, because it's hard for you to know that team value, right? The team specifically, team culture, but. You want to know the company so that you at least think about how I can fit into the company. All right. And you want to really know this job description. Uh, for students, sometimes when um, companies go to the, to, to the school, uh, university for uh, on-campus on hire, you may not know the specific jobs. Uh, if you if you know, if you are applying for a specific job, you want to really study that job description and you know you uh, how you can tell the story, let them know you meet their needs and you can use their language. If it's not a hiring for a specific job, you want to at least understand, you know, look at some of those things so you understand how they're hiring people and think about them, which means think about the company, think about the, the, the employer, 
think about the people who are interviewing you. So you want to talk about what I can contribute to the company, to the team, versus what you can do for me. And stay professional. You are looking for a job. So you want to talk about your professional skills, your strengths, your goals. Uh, if you haven't really had a, any job before, you can talk about your, uh, the, the skills from your, in, uh, your um, internships, uh, from your student clubs, those kind of things. Support your answers. That means, well, uh, later we will also talk about those different questions. You want to think in ahead about all the uh, points you make, no matter you talk about your skills or your strengths, right? You want to have something specifically can support your point so that people really believe it. And you can also tell stories so people understand it. Keep positive. That's <laughs> very important. We sometimes see people, they talk about, well, um, something, you know, some other people treated them unfairly or things that they think, uh, talk, speak badly about some other people. That gives me, the hiring manager, a warning sign. Wow, this person maybe is a little bit negative and I, I want to hire positive people. So that might can be a, a red flag to me. All right. So let me talk about the personal brand. It's something very important for you to know who you are, your personal brand. No matter you know this concept, personal brand or not, <laughs> you already have one. Uh, if you ask uh, other people who know you uh, to describe you, use a couple of words to describe you, they will use uh, those uh, some words and that's your brand. So for you, when you show up, you want to, express in a way that you show up constantly with your brand. That means your appearance, your uh, language, your resume, right? The, uh, you, when you answer the questions, it, it connects to your brand and it's consistent with your brand. How do you do that? Well, you can prepare your personal brand statement. You do this up in the front to think about who are you? Who are your core values? What is important to you? And you think about what do you offer, right? When you are looking for different jobs, you may change that a little bit. And what makes you unique? You want to come, uh, come in, prepare um, with evidence, with stories, with examples to support those points. And as I mentioned, you want to have those information consistent, not just the way how you show up, but also your LinkedIn, <laughs> your Facebook or any social media profile that or posts that you put there because employers today, they are not just looking at your um, resume. If they decided to interview you, they will look up other things to make sure this is the person that is uh, consistent, is, is what uh, is the person from paper, from all this web presence that is the right person for me. Then they will invest the time to interview you. Here, I give an example of my own st uh, personal brand statement. Um, it, this has been changed because when I was at Microsoft, I have my personal brand statement with that role or with that experience. Now, it's been six years I'm doing the current job or the current role, which uh, might run in my own company. So this is my current uh, brand statement. When I introduce myself, I can use this, something like this. I say, well, who, who are me, right? I'm passionate about helping organizations and people to fulfill their potential. That's the who are you part. And that's something about my core value, what's important to me. Then what do I offer uh, or, or uh, what makes me unique here? I color coded this. So with my 20 plus years experience in the tech industry in both the US and China, uh, and these are the companies I worked uh, um, in and some other companies I didn't really mention, but that supports the point, right? 20 plus years in tech industry uh, and certifications in coaching, cross-cultural communication and the leadership training programs, et cetera, right? So those are the uniqueness <laughs> supporting my points. Then I have proudly helped companies grow U.S.-China cross-border businesses. 
and helped professionals achieve their goals through my consulting training and coaching services. So these are the things, you know, to reflect what I offer, what I can do. And if people ask, oh, how did you do that? Then I can have my stories, my examples to tell people about all these things. All right, that's just a quick example. So how do you do that? Because I mentioned it's very important to prepare your stories and not just stories, your accomplishment, because you want to showcase who you are. A couple of things, you want to list your accomplishments. And if you can find numbers, things that are measurable, that would be great. For students, you can talk about your GPA, the awards you got, your internship, uh, et cetera. If you have done some sort of student clubs uh, or internship, there, if there are any value uh, numbers, a percentage of increase in revenue or customer satisfaction or whatever, right? Or what kind of projects you've, uh, uh, you have completed, uh, what's the results, uh, what's the time frames? these are all good. And all these things is your preparation. You list this out. Then you think about, okay, my accomplishments. How do I in incorporate this into my brand statement? I mentioned a little bit of those things in my brand statement. How do I incorporate into my stories so that I can showcase about my accomplishment versus I just come, uh, feels like I'm bragging. No, when you tell the story, you are not bragging. And you want to show your values and the traits through these stories. So it's not just the hard numbers or it's not just the thing, the tasks, the projects. You want to, through those, right? So, sometimes it's less important about the, uh, the projects itself. It's more on, well, when I'm telling people about the stories or the examples, I want them to know who I am. I want to know what I care about, you know, the integrity or the, you know, the things I think important. I want people hear that through the examples and the stories uh, I share with them so they know who I am. It's not just the words you say. So it's really important to realize that communication goes far beyond just the words you choose. So you want to make sure that your delivery is appropriate. And what I mean by that is when you're going into your interview, you want to not give them your prepared speeches so much is be conversational. So they're going to ask you a question and you need to have prepared some stories ahead of time, but you don't want to be giving them the story word for word that you memorize. You want it to come off as if you're just having a conversation with them and you haven't, you know, you're not like word for word, trying to recall your story. Make it natural, make it conversational. You want to make sure that you also show some energy, show some emotion in there. And for many other cultures, this is not natural or comfortable. But what you want to take a look at is how Americans express themselves. If you're working in an American company or if you're working in a multicultural a global corporation, take a look at the other employees and how they behave and what they're doing in terms of their speech, their body language, their gesturing, their facial expressions, and try to incorporate that into your speech. Because if you are speaking, let me try to do this, in a very monotone way with no emotion, you seem very bored. You see that? It's like, you don't want to listen to that. It seems like I'm not interested in my subject. I'm kind of bored. I'd rather be somewhere else. I'm just not engaged and excited about this process. So you want to put some passion into your speech. Listen to me as I speak right now. Listen to Michelle. We're speaking from like, um, like we love our work. We like what we do. We want other people to enjoy it as well and to learn from it. So we kind of have higher pitch. Like you'll notice our tones kind of go up. We have a lot of kind of variation in there showing that this is something that we're excited about. Now we don't want to be too excited. Like, oh my God, ah, I'm going to Disneyland. You don't want to go overboard and be a little crazy either. That's, you know... So you you want to be professional, but you also want to show that you are interested, you're excited, that this is something that you want to do, you're passionate about. 
Okay, so also when English is not your native language, sometimes, let's talk about speed first. A lot of times people get nervous and they wanna just finish it. I have to get this over with and they get nervous and they're not thinking really well and they speak really, really fast and people can't understand what they're saying. And it's like, they never stop and they never pause. And I can't really tell what they're saying because they're just speaking too fast and I just can't follow it. So it's like, oh my God, breathe, <sighs> right? It's like, take a breath, make sure you slow down. Before you go into your interview, make sure you've calmed yourself. Do some breathing ex exercises as maybe a little quick meditation. Make sure you've calmed yourself. So you can go in and you could speak at a normal speed and make sure that you pause. Notice as I'm speaking, I don't just keep going, that I stop every once in a while to just give you that extra, maybe a little half a second to think about what I just said. And then also some cultures, um, are a little maybe overly modest um, and speak at a volume that is very low. And that's usually seen as not being very confident. So make sure that you're speaking at a volume that your interviewer can clearly hear what you're saying. Don't speak too softly. Also, well, don't yell either, but make sure that you're easily heard. And, you know, it's, yeah, it's, it's coming off as being just kind of Lack of, lacking of confidence when you're not speaking with sufficient volume. And then nonverbal skills go along with this too. You wanna to make sure you smile. In American culture, that's just our normal behavior and our normal expression is to smile. Uh, I know people think that's weird sometimes. They say, why are you people smiling? But it's just, uh, that's just part of the expected culture. We just tend to um, have more of a friendly face usually. Eye contact is expected. When you, eye contact in American culture expresses, well, we consider it to express honesty and confidence. So if you're looking your interviewer in the eye, for the most part, it means you're telling them the truth and you are confident in what you're saying. If you're looking down, it's usually sending the signal of you're embarrassed, you're ashamed, you're lacking confidence in yourself, you did something wrong, you're lying. It's sending negative signals. If you're looking somewhere else or you're looking at something or you're playing with your hands, it's also, well, you're lacking confidence. Maybe you're not interested in what's going on. So definitely make eye, eye contact for the most part. It doesn't need to be 100%, but for the most part, you wanna be looking at their face to show that you're interested, you're engaged, you're telling the truth and you're interested in being there. Posture and body language, be careful that you're not, you know, tapping your foot or like, you know, fidgeting too much or, you know, that you're not sitting in like a really, you know, weird way or you're uncomfortable, you know. Generally, also, if you lean forward a little bit, it kind of um, indicates that you're interested. You know, you're kind of, your, your body is moving toward your interviewer. You're facing them directly, saying that I'm interested in this. I'm engaged in this. So careful. Body language of confidence. And I would encourage you, we don't have time to really talk a lot about body language, but I would encourage you to take a look at some TED Talks about body language and look on the internet and read about different body language, um, different posture and ways of holding yourself and what they express. So to make sure that you're coming across in a confident manner and in a positive manner. All right. Oh, handshake. Uh, most of you have probably learned about handshakes. Um, you want a nice firm handshake. You don't want to crush their hand, <laughs> but you don't want to give them the, what we call kind of the limp fish handshake, where you just, you want to make sure that there is some, uh, a little bit of pressure in there. And make sure you rehearse. Okay, so you not might not be very comfortable with showing a lot of emotion in your speech. You not, might not be comfortable with body language and eye contact and all these other things. So it's a really good idea that you need to practice and practice and practice. And you want to practice in front of a mirror so you can see yourself. It's ideally you can record yourself too and watch your replay and make sure you get some help. Make sure you get friends or somebody that can also watch you and give you feedback. 
it would be especially good to have American friends that could do this. Or if you're still at the university, perhaps you can do a mock interview where they can give you some feedback about, you know, what they're seeing and hearing and how you're answering. Because in your cultures, what's expected is often quite different from in American culture, what is considered uh, the most appropriate communication for an interview. So definitely rehearse and get feedback. All right, we're gonna do some common interview questions. I think we'll give this to Michelle here. Now let's look at the questions that right. uh, typical questions, very common questions you will meet at interviews. Uh, these are the questions that I used a lot. And uh, I would say, you know, when we train our uh, people do the interviews, they all use a lot. Uh, not everybody will ask all the questions, but the top 10s are very commonly you, you meet. Normally, almost every interview, you probably will get this one. Tell me about yourself. Why should we hire you? You may not get exactly the words, but in different ways. What's your greatest strength? What's your greatest weakness? Yeah, I got this a lot, mm -hmm. right? And I ask people this. Why do you want to work for us? I usually will ask this question to see if you did the work, the research, right? Why did you leave your last job if somebody is an industry hire versus from college? What is your greatest accomplishment? And describe a difficult work situation and what you did to overcome it. This one is more like a behavioral type of interview questions versus uh, uh, the other type of interviews. And uh, I expect you tell me a, a, a story, right, of that situation. And where do you see yourself in five years? That's very common because I want to know as a hiring manager, are you just using our company as a stepping stone or are you somebody would like to stay for a little while? Or it's okay if you, you know, this uh, one thing I just want to uh, spend a few seconds here. If somebody, um, they want to have their own company in the future, they say, well, you know, uh, they tell the truth, right? I, I would like someday I run my own company. Uh, it's totally okay to say that. Um, but don't leave an impression that uh, I come here for a year, then I leave. <laughs> then the company would not invest the time to train you because after six months, you start to do the job. And then when you really start to contribute, you leave, right? So, and do you have any questions for me for the interviewer? Usually is the last question they will ask before uh, they say goodbye or you say goodbye to them. These are the top 10. Uh, we just uh, put it there. And then I think we will pick a few of them uh, to help you. Okay. So just one word before we move on to answering the questions is you don't have to answer immediately. If you don't an understand the question, ask them to clarify for you. You can say something like, I'm sorry, can you repeat that question? So I know you might be a little nervous or there might be a word in there that you didn't quite understand. Ask them to repeat, it's totally fine. And you can also say, sometimes the question might be a little confusing. You're not, maybe you understood the words, but you're not quite sure of the intent. Clarify. Let me make sure I understand your question. Are you asking this? Kind of repeat what you heard. And there are many other versions of these two of asking to repeat. So don't feel like you have to just immediately answer. Take control. Take a moment to calm yourself and then just ask for a repeat. Sometimes we don't even know what we're going to say right away. So if you need time to think, you might say something like, that's an interesting question. Let me think about that for a second. As you're kind of talking, you can kind of be thinking in your mind how you might want to answer that. All right. So now we are going to talk about that first and, and most likely question that you will get. Tell me about yourself. There's a, a few different ideas. You can talk a little bit about like your past and then your present, your future. And you can switch that around and talk about your present, what you're doing now what you did in the past and your accomplishments and kind of where you're going from here. You can structure it as kind of a beginning, middle and end, which is kind of similar. There's kind of three parts in either way we do this. The beginning is 
who I am, what do I do, what do I contribute? Your middle being kind of like your supporting points, your history, your skills, and your end again with what can I do for you, the employer, how can I contribute to your organization? So either way, there's kind of three parts that are happening in your answer here. You want to prepare a shorter and a longer version, just depending upon if you have an interview that says, you know, I can only give you 20 minutes here, you probably want to keep it short. If you know it's going to be a nice long interview of an hour, go ahead and, you know, give a little bit more, uh, you know, supporting stories and a little bit of supporting detail. But overall, you probably don't want to go more than about two minutes on this or else your interviewer will probably start thinking about something else and kind of forgot what you said. Um, by keeping it like 90 seconds to two minutes, they will ask you for some more details on the points that they would like to know, know more about. So what we're doing is just giving them a short little teaser about, hey, this is who I am, this is what I've done, and that will plant the seeds for your next stories because they will ask you to elaborate on the parts they're most interested in. Yeah. So now. And we're going to do a role play here. Um, assuming I uh, want to hire a English coach for my team, right? And uh, I have some empl uh, employees here and I'm trying to hire this uh, uh, consultant, the coach to help my people become effective communicator. And I'm interviewing Nicole. So in this way, um, Nicole, come, you know, we, we're doing this and I will, I'm the hiring manager. I will ask Nicole. Uh, Nicole, tell me about yourself. Okay. Well, currently I'm an English language and communication coach and I help foreign born professionals improve their English communication skills. I love my work and I've been teaching ESL to adults for 20 years. Some professional accomplishments I'm most proud of are the four online courses I've created, my more than 120 video lessons on YouTube. I've also created and given numerous workshops, both live and online. I'm a teacher trainer, and I spoke on online pronunciation, on teaching pronunciation at the International TESOL Conference in 2018. And I'm really looking forward to finding out more about the needs of your employees so we can design some training to help them become better English communicators and more valuable employees to you as well. See, as a hiring manager uh, who are trying to hire a consultant for my team, when I hear this, there are a couple of things that I immediately got to my mind, right? Of course, when we are doing this, I don't have this in front of me, the written words. Right. Uh, we just want to make sure our uh, audience can follow us easily. Mm -hmm. uh, one thing I know what she does. I know Nicole, you know, she helps uh, um, people improve their English communication skills. And I know she has a lot of experience. She mentioned all these numbers. And I am really curious about, oh, what online courses? What kind of courses? 120 video. <laughs> wow, I want to take a look. Right? Uh, why did you do that? I want to know all these things. So plant the seeds in this very short, uh, very brief introduction. But it, it, those are hooks. It caused a lot of curiosity from me. On one side, I'm impressed. On the other side, I want to know more. I will ask questions about a lot of these things I just heard. And of course, the, the last part is the reason I want. Then it's not just, uh, uh, I want to pick somebody and Nicole needs to evaluate if this is the right team for her to work with. So we need to do more conversations to understand each other. So that's uh, that's the shorter uh, version. Exactly. And of course you have a longer version if I, do. If I have the notice, time, right? I, yeah, <laughs> I did I did split this into three sections as well. So you can kind of see the, um, you know, either the beginning, middle and end, or you can kind of see also the, the you know, present, past and, and future to get an idea of either way here, we're kind of crafting a three part answer. This is my short one. It actually was probably more like 45 seconds. Um, I could speak really, really fast and do it in 30 seconds, but that, that wouldn't be appropriate pausing to give my listener uh, enough time to kind of understand what I'm saying. So I do slow it down a bit and, and make sure that's, that's something really important to note. Make sure that you are pausing in there. You're not speaking too fast. It's better to slow down and speak a bit slower than to speak too fast and have your listener overwhelmed by your speech. So slow down, pause, don't be afraid to do that. That's probably, I would say the number one thing 
to having more understandable speech is to slow down and pause. Okay. And with that said, this is the longer version here. We probably don't want to go through the whole thing here, but I, you'll notice my first section, I added quite a bit more detail in there. And my second section, I added more detail as well. And the last section is pretty much still the same. So in my two minute version, I just have a little bit more about kind of what I'm currently doing and who I work with. In the middle section, a bit more information on, on my career and some of the other highlights that have happened there. So again, still three parts, just a little bit more detail. All right, shall we move on? What is your greatest weakness? Now, this is probably one of the most difficult questions to answer. So what is our strategy for dealing with this? Well, first of all, you want to think hard about this. You really want to know yourself. We don't want to lie here. We actually want to be honest, but we want to be honest in things that are not essential essential job functions. Because if you are applying for a job as a software developer and you are not detail oriented, that is a deal breaker for this job. You know, obviously if you're a programmer or a coder, you need, the details are very, very important. So if you tell them that you're not detail oriented and you know, <laughs> that's really not, not something you wanna be telling them. You wanna be saying something that is not a crucial job function. So think, think hard about this and think about more than one. Make sure that you have multiple answers for this because you might fall into the trap of they ask you what are your greatest weaknesses or can you tell me a few of your weaknesses? So don't fall in the trap of having one and then having nothing to say when they ask for two or three. All right. So be honest, know yourself. All right. And also, what are you doing to overcome this weakness? We all also want to show that we are self-aware and that we are actually working on improving ourselves in the areas that we don't do well in. Okay. So can you turn your weakness into a strength? Right? If you are too detail-oriented, I actually myself can say this. <laughs> if I'm interviewing for a job and somebody says, well, what's your weakness? I say, I'm too de detail oriented um, because I probably spend too much time in the details and looking at everything and re-looking at it and reanalyzing that I spend way too much time when I need to finish this project in two hours and I'm taking forever because I'm trying to be perfect. That for some jobs can be excellent. <laughs> Right. If you are an accountant, if you're a coder, if you're an architect, if you're somebody who is needing to look at the fine details, that's actually a strength. In some cases, if you're super slow, that's really probably never a strength. But anyhow, are you a workaholic? <laughs> well, that is not good for you personally to spend all of your time working, but your employer might think, oh, yay, we have somebody who will never, you know, never stop working and be here all night if we need them, and that could be good. Can't say no, that's not good for you, but also your employer might, well, may or may not think that's a good thing. They might think, oh, we can ask this person to do anything and she'll never say no, <laughs> but also that might not be too good either, so think carefully how you want to answer that. And actually, I wanted to ask you, the audience, what weaknesses would you say that you have in a job interview? Think about this. There are some, I don't know, you may not want to admit your weaknesses, but there are some weaknesses that really aren't that bad and are very understandable. Think about it. How, how will you answer this in your interview? And feel free to put them in the chat. There we go. There's an answer. Michelle, can you see the chat? Yes. I used to say I get frustrated when something doesn't progress. Well, okay. this is a very common for everybody. Yeah. yeah. So how about a <laughs> procrastination? Ooh. Like need some pressure to do something. Ooh. Huh. Is that a good answer, Michelle? What do you think about that? Well, uh, as an employer, uh, I would say... Um, it's it's something I understand. A lot of people do that, and my kids do that a lot, right? And um, it's not horrible. But on the other side, 
then I know I need to manage you. <laughs> mm. So it's a neutral. I wouldn't that, say that so one might be bad. a little tricky. You, I think you would have to really explain that in a way that says that I'm working on overcoming this and it's not going to affect my job and my day to day functions. Right, right. Well, I say there's some more. There's some um, more answers. Yeah. Uh, can't say no, which we mentioned something mm -hmm. like that. Uh, conflict averse. Okay, conflict like averse. Conflict. Mm -hmm. Okay, I can see that. And I think that's very truthful. Yes, I like, I think you're all putting honest answers in there. And I think that's definitely good. You don't want to be lying and making up things. You want to be able to back up what you're saying with examples and stories. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and some other people say, well, uh, how about <laughs> this person is in the technical uh, QA quality uh, assurance. So, uh, Dealing with angry customer calls when sales support has gone home for the day. Oh, <laughs> that's a scenario. Um, oh my goodness. Actually, okay. that, that would be really good for what we're going to talk about in a bit about yeah. telling stories. That is going to be excellent. Right. So and the couple that just came off the top of my head here, um, thinking about you guys and what I hear a lot of times is English skills. Like my weaknesses my, are my English skills. Um, in meetings, I don't know how to interrupt. I don't know how to insert myself. My boss tells me I need to be more visible, but I don't know how. It's kind of like just lacking those skills. You're in a new culture. You're expected to behave differently and you're not quite sure how to do that yet. So I think those are very forgivable uh, weaknesses because it's definitely something that you can learn and improve on. Um, being yeah. shy, oh, you wanted to add something there? Uh, I want to add, uh, give a real example. I just recently interviewed for a project that uh, we will train Microsoft executives. Those are really, really big VP, corporate VP, really uh, big bosses, right? And I said one thing about my weakness is, well, um, uh, my English has accent, which is obvious, right? Mm -hmm. uh, but on the other side, I said, um, yeah, but I think the good thing is if I'm training people from the worldwide, from you know the globe versus just Americans, that can be a strength. Mm -hmm. I just turn it around, saying this is a weakness, but on the other side, it helps people. It let people feel more inclusive uh, when they are from other countries and they see the trainer is not a American, typical American, and uh, her mm -hmm. English has some accent, so yeah. they don't feel bad. Yeah. Yeah, anyway. yeah, I think that that's definitely comforting for people that realize like, oh, this is okay. You know, I mean, the, the people that are higher up also have accents. That's totally fine. And yeah, so I would not be, I would not be embarrassed at all by your English skills. Um, and then be, be honest. Say, so, you know, I, I'm working. I, I know that's one area that I need to work on and, and I'm actually taking steps to, to progress in that area. So as long as you're admitting your weakness, but also saying that, and here's what I'm doing to improve in that area. Um, if you're a little shy, quiet, not sure, you know, you could, you could say that, you know, I'm, I've just been always introverted and I just, you know, I'm not really comfortable talking to uh, people I don't know well. And you, know, you can go on about that. Um, if a lot of you are students and you really don't have a lot of job experience, you might just say, you know, I'm kind of lacking experience in these areas, but you know, I'm, um, starting an internship now and I'm going to be working on this and this summer I plan to do this, you can, um, you know, just that that's something very valid as well. Lacking confidence. Oh, that may or not may be good. I, I, I hear this a lot. People are, you know, I'm a little lacking confidence, you know, maybe you're kind of young, don't have the experience, but you know, you're working on improving yourself. So I think all fairly valid things to say to answer this question. Yep, these are totally fine. And okay. a lot of things are facts. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Let's look at what is your greatest accomplishment? All right. So first you want to sit down and you want to make a list of actually what you've accomplished. If you can put numbers to those accomplishments, that's great. You know, I have more than 120 videos or um, I worked on a project where I supervised five employees or... Last year when I created this project and 
it increased our sales by 10%. If you can put numbers on your achievements, that, that is a good thing as well. And it's not yeah, required. Or, uh, yeah, or as a student, you worked in this uh, clubs, right? Student clubs, or you organize the events. Oh, we did our Christmas party, right? Oh, uh, has uh, how many people turn off, uh, turn in, uh, turn, what's the right word? Turn up. <laughs> oh, how many people uh, attend? I would just say attended, but. Turn yeah, up. so yeah, you can. So, uh, that's uh, that's just a funny the turn in, turn on, turn up. Turn up. <laughs> What's yeah. the right word there? This this is the subject of um, a lot of uh, suffering from second language for from non-native English speakers. Uh, phrasal verbs, lots of suffering in the phrasal verb area. So, oh well. We will talk about those in a different and, class. And another <laughs> yes, and another time we'll talk. We could talk for a long time about that, but not at the moment. <laughs> oh, okay. So anyhow, so for your greatest accomplishments, you definitely want to sit down and prepare for this. Make sure you create yourself a list of what you've done. And it's a good thing um, as you're in your career as well, I would say every so often sit down and make a list. Every time you're evaluated at your work or you leave a job, make sure you sit down and you write out all the things you've done before you forget. Um, and so when you're thinking about your interview, you want to choose accomplishments that relate to the job description. Look specifically at that job description and what you need to accomplish and make sure your achievements that you're choosing to talk about are related to that job description. Uh, consider the, your core values too, how they're reflected in your accomplishments and make sure to tie that in with the company's values. I want to go back to something we talked about, Michelle touched down earlier. Do so you want to make sure when you're researching the, the company that you're going to interview with, that you look carefully at their mission statement and their vision statements, which should be included in their website. So make sure you find out what those core values are of that company. What's really important to them? Do they, do they pride themselves in having excellent customer service? Are they, you know, cutting edge technology? Um, what is super important to them? And make sure that you use those keywords when you're in your interview. And for Microsoft, uh, I can tell you, really try to demonstrate your growth mindset. If you don't know what is a growth mindset, <laughs> go and search for it. Mm -hmm. uh, this is uh, the Microsoft uh, from 2014. We put a lot of emphasis on changing this uh, company culture towards growth mindset. Mm. Okay, interesting. All right. Oh, make sure you're creating some stories. We're going to talk a little bit about stories in a bit and how to craft your stories. So I, I actually was talking to someone today who gave me a bit of advice. I told her I was going to be talking about interview skills today. And she says, oh, yeah, I used to, um, what'd she tell me? She used to coach people in the interview skills. And she said, make sure you have four to six stories already created that show various different qualifications for the position. You know, already sit down and create these in your mind and make sure they actually reflect a few of the different qualifications. And then when you use one story, if that same story is appropriate for like the next question they ask, well, make sure that you have a few other stories you can draw upon as well. So you need to become a, a bit of a storyteller these days before in your preparation for your interviews. Make sure you have a few. And some of you who are students might say, I don't have any stories. I haven't done anything exciting in my life, right? But so Here's from the American standpoint. If you are coming to this country from another country, right? You grew up somewhere else, but you were an excellent student. You did really well. You, you, you got really high, uh, high scores on your exams. You were admitted to an American university where you're now here and you are functioning in English. You are taking tests in English. You're learning subject material. You're doing presentations in English. I'm thinking that is a huge accomplishment in itself, just being able to do all these new functions in, in English, if that is not, you know, your language that you were schooled in originally. 
to be able to come to this country and be successful and do this is really, it shows that you're adaptable, that you're flexible, that you can grow and learn new things quickly, and that you probably have different mindsets that would be really valuable in the workplace. So don't discount your life experience just because you're young and you're a student. Really think about kind of what's gone on in your life and, and maybe how unique that is coming from the perspective of perhaps an American interviewer who has not done those things. Did you want to add anything, Michelle? Uh, yes, I um, I think uh, a lot of times uh, we, because I was an international student in the U.S., we think this is something we should do, right? We chose to come here and we really discount this experience. So uh, be proud of this experience. When I prepared this with Nicole, when Nicole pointed this out, I was like, wow, really? <laughs> I thought it's just a part of our life. We, mm -hmm. Yeah, but that's from Americans' eyes. They think, wow, this is a you know, this is such a big uh, accomplishment, achievement. You have mm -hmm. this courage to change your life like this. Right. Yeah. I'm thinking like, oh my gosh, if I was in a foreign university and I had to stand up and do like a presentation in another language and, you know, not only know and learn the subject matter, but also explain that I'm like, oh my God, that's, think about how difficult that is. And, you know, all the other hurdles that are involved in, in that. So anyhow. Yeah. I want to add a, a question from somebody who uh, says that how not to look overqualified with oh. a PhD. This is a great question. Mm. <laughs> uh, uh, I can tell you the truth. Microsoft, uh, for example, and Google and all the other <laughs> big tech companies, we hire a lot of PhDs. And sometimes the PhD's starting point is the same as the master degrees. Uh, years ago, it could be doing the same exact things as the bachelor's, <laughs> mm. which is, yeah, you spend another many years, five to seven years, and then the bachelor's, you are getting the same. Uh, mm -hmm. Now, the, the PhD's and the master's are similar uh, in some of the jobs. So, yes, there are jobs that they hire they may hire people have a higher degree than is really needed, right? Sometimes we do that because we want to hire this person. We know this is a this person will be overqualified for this particular job now, but we're thinking about the potential of this person. Uh, what I mean is in the company, we may today, I just need this person to do the coding, but because you are a PhD, you have spent a lot of time being trained in doing research, in doing things in a certain way, right? I think that will be really helpful in the future. So maybe I hire you in. Um, I know you are overqualified. I want you be here. Then I will help to find opportunities that utilize you better. So it's okay if you are overqualified. And if it's a job that some people, you know, really just need somebody uh, without uh, that high degree, and uh, I wouldn't uh, suggest you, unless you really want it, I wouldn't suggest you just go for some job that you feel that you are not being treated fair. Don't do that. You won't be happy. <laughs> so uh, again, think about what you want, right? If you really want this job, you really like it, then go ahead. Uh, but if you feel that I, you know, I don't, uh, I don't want it. Uh, I, you know, I, I won't be happy. Then think about it. There we go. Oh, behavioral questions. Behavioral yeah. questions are tricky. So we need to prepare for these definitely. Okay. So what is a behavioral question? Let, let me, yeah, let me go yeah, with the manager side and, first. Oh, do you want uh, me let to? Me share with you from the manager side. So why people ask behavioral questions and what is behavioral questions? The behavioral questions is questions that you, uh, to ask you, well, tell me a situation or uh, give me an example, right? They want to hear the story. They want to see something. Oh, how did you do this project? So what and how you do things? Why do I ask these questions to the people I'm interviewing? I really want to know a couple of things. On one side, you know, I want to know what you told me about this great projects that you have done or the things you listed on the paper, how true it is. I want to go deep. 
So I know you have done it. And from the details you, you are telling me, I can see your soft skills and I can identify your strengths as well as what kind of person you are, your characters, your traits, I can see that. So uh, when the story or an example sh tells me things, for example, this is soft skills, critical thinking, problem solving, your analytical skills, right? Uh, uh, you have, or you have a very uh, high creativity. Uh, how do you resolve a confl uh, conflict? Because that can be a question. Tell me a situation that, uh, uh, you know, you have different uh, ideas or you, uh, your colleagues uh, <laughs> have uh, some conflicts with you. How are you going to, how did you um, handle that? Uh, we will give you the examples. Yeah, handling stress, failure, are you a resilient person, right? Something you, you may not do it right, then what, uh, what are you doing? Or what have you done to recover yourself? All these things, yeah, um, integrity, reliability, motivation, leadership, that's another thing important to show uh, if, you, if you think that's a part of you, you want to impress others. Interpersonal skills through this talking, but in specific uh, difficult situations, I can see that. Now, how do you answer it? Well, the behavior interview questions, usually the listeners are trying to hear stories or examples. So you want to answer with examples and stories. But I really want to emphasize this one. Don't focus too much on the details of that specific scenario stories, uh, because sometimes the interviewer does not understand that specifics or is something in your previous job, they don't know it, right? If you keep on telling them all these details, they got lost, they don't understand it, and you are spending so much time on that. They are trying to trying to figure out what is the things they are looking for. So you want to focus on demonstrating your skills and your qualities. And you just uh, briefly describe the situation, set it up. Uh, how to do it, uh, Nicole will tell you this. So that's the focus. Focus on the part that shows who you are, how you did it. Okay, so behavior questions. Just uh, a few examples here and notice kind of how they start what they're asking. They're usually saying something like share an example or tell me about a time. So share an example of a time you faced a difficult problem at work or school and how did you solve that? And very often behavioral questions are kind of negative. They want to know about something that was difficult and what you did, how you were able to solve this problem. Occasionally there are some positive ones, but you can expect more kind of negative tinged questions here. So don't be scared. There are very, there's a very a good strategy you can follow to actually answer these as long as you're prepared. Oh, let's see. There we go. Oops. Tell me about a mistake you've made and how did you handle it? You're thinking, oh my gosh, this is awful, right? But well, as long as you prepare ahead of time and you expect these type of questions and you have some good stories, you should be able to pass these fine. Tell me about a time when you disagreed with your boss or your teacher and how did you resolve it? Tell me about a time you worked with other people to complete a project. See, this one is not negative at all, but it is asking like, how, how, what kind of team worker are you? Um, how do you handle conflict? You know, when things happen and people don't agree, what do you do? How do you handle it? Uh, sure, an example of a time you failed. What did you learn from that experience? And describe a time that you had a conflict with a team member and how did you handle it? So you can see if you have not prepared for these, this would be really, really hard to answer in an interview. So, but if, if you're expecting them, it shouldn't be too bad. So here's our strategy. We're gonna tell stories and we're gonna provide, provide examples of real work or school situations where you were successful, where you had a challenge and you overcame that challenge. Okay. You want to stay positive. Make sure you're not criticizing people. You're not blaming other people for things that have happened. That you are going to be honest and you are going to explain what your role is in the conflict and how you resolve the conflict and how you learned from it. 
Failure is not necessarily bad. It's how we learn. It's how we grow. If you never take any risks, well, you're likely not going to ever have any failures. So taking risks is necessary sometimes to, to actually grow and move forward and to do bigger and better things. So stay positive. Oh, make sure you don't reveal any confidential inf information about your prior employer or your current employer. And again, show self-awareness that you've actually thought about this, you've analyzed it, you're mature, and you're honest, and that you learned. Okay, so we're going to tell stories as a basis for answering these questions. And there is a method, it's called the STAR method, because you're going to start out with the S in STAR, right, S-T-A-R, S for situation. So basically, you want to just give a little... In your story, you're going to talk a little bit about what the situation was. You don't want to talk for too long, about a minute and a half again, not a long story. Just give the real basics. If they want to know more, they'll ask you some details, but try to keep it fairly short. So S, situation. What's the issue? T, basically the task. So what was your role in what happened, what the situation was? What actions were taken? So what were your contributions? Well, okay, we have this issue. Okay, this was my role in it. And here is what I did. And then here was the final result. And hopefully that final result is a positive outcome. We know there was a negative situation, but how were you able to resolve it? And if you can add some numbers, that would be great. You know, dollar numbers or percentages or something to, to actually show um, some concrete facts. That's, that's good. Not required though. So that is the STAR method. And Unfortunately, we don't have a lot of time to practice this. This would be really nice if we can kind of do this and create these and then share them, but we're a little limited tonight. So I am just going to give you a brief situation, one that I found on the internet. You can also find these on the internet. I'm going to list the sources. You'll notice at the bottom of each page, there is a source where this material has come from, from the internet. So you can go and you can look in a bit more detail and find answers to all of these difficult questions. But here is one example. So share an example of a time when you failed and what did you learn from the experience? So your story should highlight key qualities that are relevant to your position in your story. So pick stories that want to show, that show that your qualities and your values and your qualifications for this position, okay? And the story's ending needs to show that you are self-aware, you're willing to accept some constructive criticism and that you are learning. That's the most important point. Because we all do make mistakes in life and, and that's just, just part of who we are in life. And, um, you know, it might be embarrassing at the time, but we learn a lot from that. So definitely use those experiences, uh, put them in a positive light and learn from them. Okay, so we're gonna go ahead and answer that. Um, task errors, we can see this happening. This has happened definitely. So just very quick, we're gonna set up. Here's the situation. My current job involves processing claims for our clients. In this instance, I unknowingly made an error regarding the client's information. And as a result, the company received major pushback from the client. Pushback meaning like problems and issues and the client was not happy. Okay, so this put a lot of stress on my team as it was our responsibility to remain accurate and thorough. The error was alarming and our team suffered because of it. So see, we're, we're actually, we're, we're owning up to the mistake. We're honest. Hey, this happened. And, you know, I'm really sorry about it. It, it was not intentional, but it happened. Um, so again, here is what you did. You're a mature person. You know, this is a learning experience. You want to get ahead. You want, you want to not make the mistake again. So you're showing, you know, here's what I did to resolve this problem. I spoke to my manager about this and we worked together to implement some new strategies to prevent this from occurring, right? So you learned, you grew, and you are now a better employee, a more valuable person from having this experience. So definitely don't take these errors as a negative, right? 
So, and here's the wrap up. Since then I have not made task errors like this again, and I'm able to keep track of my work in a more effect, efficient way. So happily ever after. <laughs> so definitely end on a positive note. You'll definitely want to ask your interviewer some questions at the end. Prepare these ahead of time. And don't just think I'm going to do this on the fly there. Did you want to go on with this one, Michelle? Uh, sure. I okay. will just uh, uh, give a little bit of perspective as well from the uh, manager side, right? So the, the ways to do it, uh, you, you want to make a list of questions to bring to the interview. And uh, the interviewer side, uh, as an interviewer, I want to give the, as a courtesy, right? I want to give the interviewee some time to ask questions. That's uh, just uh, one of the nice things to do. Uh, the It would be really helpful you prepare in advance. You want to, you don't want to ask questions that is so obvious. You don't want to ask questions like, okay, um, what is the company's history or what is the mission, right? It's all on the website. Don't ask that kind of questions. You ask questions that uh, it shows that you did research. You did your research, but it's something you really care about the company. You really care about this opportunity. So it shows up from your questions. So that's why you can ask things like a interviewer's experience at the company. Uh, what, uh, how the success or challenges looks in this particular role I'm applying. And am I, what do you think, right? Am I the right fit for the job, for the company? Um, and what's the next step uh, in this process, in this hiring process? Yeah, what can I expect next? And specifically, um, I think, uh, Nicole, that's yours. Okay. Yeah, that's yours. Um, so here, let me go back really quick. Uh, there we go. Okay, so the interviews experience of the company is, is fairly obvious. You know, how do you like working here? You know, what are your day-to-day -day functions? You, know, you can ask, those are fairly self-explanatory to just get, a, get an idea of the culture. But I wanted to give you some specific things for the success and challenges of the job because you do really wanna get more details on the day-to-day -day functions of the job that you're applying for to make sure that's a good fit for you too because really you don't want to take a job that you're going to be sorry about after three months or six months and say oh my gosh what did i do so it is good to to get a little bit more information on what it takes to be successful in the job what challenges to expect what other employees have experienced and, and such so here are some questions that you can ask in in that situation like what skills and experience would make someone successful in this job and what is the key to success in this job? But I, I'm, for number two, I'm thinking more in terms of if I'm on the job, what are the things that I'm doing and the attitude I'm having in order to, to be successful, in order to do well here and why? So, yeah, and from the hiring manager side, I like to hear this kind of questions because that means you really want to get to this job, right? Mm -hmm. And then we also want to know about kind of the challenges, like, what are the biggest challenges I'll be facing in the job? I mean, what should I be prepared for? Am I prepared for this? Do I want to take on this challenge? Is this something that's going to help me grow and achieve my goals? Or is this a challenge I don't want to deal with? And maybe here's a thought. You, you can or cannot answer ask this if you like. How long do people typically stay in this job? Maybe where do they go from here? If um, typically they stay in this job for two years and then they're promoted to, you know, somewhere else or they last for a year and they burn out and they go to our competition. Well, <laughs> I don't know if your interviewer would admit that, but, um, you know, it, it's not a good sign. Definitely. Where, right. you know, where of the previous employees that have had this job gone and why have they, why have they, they left? And this question also shows that you are thinking about your career, you know, not just this one job, you are thinking, planning your career, right? You are a person that uh, really taking your career seriously, uh, think the long term. Yeah. yeah. All right. So the last thing you want to do is basically you're thinking of the interview as kind of like a sales pitch. You are there to sell yourself. You, you are the commodity you're selling. Okay. So you want to close the sale or uncover objections. If they don't want to hire you, you want to know why. Um, is there something that you didn't say that maybe you can add now? Is there maybe you didn't come across well, you were not perceived well in the interview and 
maybe they'll give you that insight that you just don't seem like you're really excited about this job. You know, you, you, they could give you some valuable insight on either, you know, what you need to say to maybe turn that around or how to you do, uh, how can you be successful in your next interview based on what they just told you. So here, here's a couple of key. These are word for word I found on the internet. After discussing this job, I feel as if I would be a perfect fit for it. I'm curious to know if there's anything I said or did not say that would make you believe otherwise. So basically you're just saying, I think this is, this is a great job for me. I'm excited about this. What do you think? We, are you going to hire me? <laughs> so. Uh, based on our conversation today, do you believe I can excel in this position or do you have any areas of concern? And if you had to choose your finalist for this position today, would I be included? So you don't have to be this blunt. You can ask in, you know, in less direct ways if this makes you feel uncomfortable. But I would say, well, um, you know, I, I really um, would like to have this position, um, you know, and kind of ask if they think that you're fit. I think that's and or, perfectly valid. Yeah. Or you can ask, uh, what's the next step in this mm -hmm. process? Yeah. That so too. if they say, if they say something like, well, we will let you know, um, you know, in two weeks, uh, we have a couple of more people to interview, right? Uh, or something, um, we, our hiring manager or, or our HR will prepare and, you know, will do their part. We will feed to them. Usually they will give you something general. Uh, don't tell you the yes or no right away. Yeah. But if they really want to hire you, sometimes the hiring manager can say that right in front of you. So um, that's, yeah, that's okay. uh, how it is. All right. It's nine o'clock. Oh my goodness. I would say our weakness is we have trouble keeping the time <laughs> and we need to work on that. This always happens at our webinars like, oh my gosh, we didn't finish. Okay. Final tips here. Um, how to speak clearly and confidently and, and have success in your interview. Prepare, prepare, prepare. Be very, very prepared. Practice with other people. Get feedback from others. Uh, practice in front of a mirror. Record yourself and listen. Try to video record if you can. Uh, you will probably be horrified, but um, that's natural and normal. Everybody's horrified when they either hear their voice or see themselves for the first time. They just think it's the worst, but you get used to it. And it's definitely a good learning experience. Uh, watch your delivery, slow down and add pausing. Show enthusiasm, but don't go overboard on the enthusiasm. Use confident body language. Love yourself. And I believe Dr. Chuprina is out there in the audience. And we talked about this last week about the importance of loving yourself and realizing your own value. And then that way other people will love and respect you as well. And if you have not seen that webinar, I suggest that you take a look at it. It's on my website, uh, my uh, YouTube channel. Um, calm yourself before entering the interview with breathing exercises, uh, visualization, meditation. And that is something we talked about in that prior uh, webinar as well about these last couple, loving yourself, realizing your value, ways of calming yourself to perform better. All right. I think we are at the end. So, uh, yeah, here are some contact information for us. And uh, you can also go to these different channels to find more information. Uh, Nicole's uh, YouTube has a lot of uh, very useful free <laughs> videos, uh, classes there. And uh, my uh, podcasts uh, have information about the different career, especially the Chinese one. And the English one is for people who are interested in uh, having a career in China. Uh, the Chinese one is talking about the career in the US. So, so a lot of information and you can see our WeChat there, as well as we have a uh, WeChat group, which is very much focused on career and, uh, you know, workshops, communication, these type of things. And feel free to join our WeChat group. I think it's in the next page, we have the uh, WeChat, yeah. Uh, so you can scan that, so then you can join our uh, WeChat group. It's only selective people for uh, career, communication, English-related topics. 
uh, by the way, I see some questions here. I just want to quickly mm. mention uh, a few things here so Nico and I can help. And if people need to go, uh, feel mm. free to leave. Um, I would love to take a picture if there, anybody would like a picture. We have to have the obligatory Zoom photo. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, let's, let's take the if picture first. If you guys first, can stick around we'll... for a minute and we'll take a photo. Yeah, then we will answer these questions. Okay. okay. So can people turn on your uh, camera? And uh, Nicole, can you stop sharing? So we- Oh, we yes. Would, okay. Yeah, we would be all there. Um, yeah, if you feel comfortable, please turn on your camera. Yes. Um, we talked a lot tonight, didn't we? <laughs> <laughs> it's like, I think we should do it longer, but then again, two hours would probably be a long time for people, especially on a Saturday night. Are we all ready hey, now? it's nice to see all your faces. I We're just talking here. We don't know who we're talking to. It's just we're talking to the screen. So it's nice to actually see who we're talking to out there. Oh, my goodness. Um, Have you done? No, I haven't. <laughs> I was waiting for people to tune in. Some of you are shy. Okay, I'm just going to go ahead and take a picture. Oh, I think, oh, you know what? It did, but I always make strange faces. I didn't realize it was taking a picture. Hold on a second. Sorry. Just one more second. Uh, one more second. One more second. Okay. Okay. Thanks, guys. I appreciate it. <laughs> and if for those who wants to stay, uh, we can answer the few questions that is uh, in the chat. I know we didn't give them very much time to ask along the way, so I hope that's you guys the problem. Will stick we we and... always talk too much. <laughs> I know. Both Michelle and I are just kind of natural, right? Teachers, we just talk and talk and talk and talk. <laughs> okay, who has questions? So in the chat. Uh, there are a couple of questions. I want to first Let's emphasize see. this one. Um, oh. The... Why did you leave your last job? Uh, yeah, let, let, let me manage this and we start to answer this. I want to first okay. ask, uh, answer this one. Should we email the interviewer after the interview to write you to write a thank you note? Definitely. Yes. Always I'd do say that. Absolutely. Yes. Uh huh. So that's an easy question to answer. Yes. Another one. When they ask you, why did you leave your last job? What is the best answer? My last company was terrible, but I know I can't say that in an interview. <laughs> then what is recommended to say? Uh, um, uh, usually, I, I can share you uh, the strategies that uh, people uh, often use. Um, and then you see if it works for you. A lot of times we leave the last job is because we want to either we want to uh, get new challenges right i already have done that for a long time and i want to challenge myself i want to keep on growing so that's a very good reason for people move on and uh, it never offend anybody or I want to have opportunities to on a specific thing. For example, I want to um, to learn about AI. I'm just making it up right away uh, on the fly. Uh, or I want to uh, you know to uh, try something more innovative. And I know your company has this, or your company is a leader in AI or in some space, right? <clears throat> that helps position why you are aligning. Uh, applying this job as well as your career ambitions or uh, sometimes uh, I want to develop my leadership skills and in the big company I work uh, in it's pretty hard to get that spot because so many people but in a smaller company uh, or a growing fast growing company uh, startup then I have a higher chance to do that etc so uh, the that's something I would think about to say versus say, oh, my other company, is, it sucks. And, <laughs> and of course, uh, you it's okay to tell the truth if the company, for example, I've um, met situations that that industry is dying. Mm. It's, a, it's a sunset industry. If you, I 
just stay loyal, stay there for that. Someday I'm out of job. <laughs> or the company is not doing well financially. Yeah, you can come up with these type of reasons. Any other suggestions, Nicole, from your side? Um, I liked your first answer about I'm ready for new challenges. <laughs> I was kind of thinking, yeah, I'm really tired of the same old challenge of this terrible workplace and this terrible boss. I'm ready for something new. No, but not saying that, but um, <laughs> yeah, just making a bit, you know, I'm, I'm looking for something new. Um, I'm wanting to grow in this new area now. Um, I mean, it's true. You're looking for something new. You're wanting new challenges, new horizons. You want to take your career in like a slightly different direction. Um, but yeah, it's, um, yeah, definitely don't say your job was terrible, even though it probably was, or your boss was horrible. And, you know, we've all had situations like that and you'd love to talk all about that, but you can save that for your friends. <laughs> mm -hmm or your coworkers or, you know, but yeah. not the interview. Yeah, by the way, uh, the video, because we're recording and it will be posted on YouTube. Oh. So later we will be able to share with you. That's right. And Actually. if somebody is in China calling, uh, they may not be able to see YouTube. I will see if I can put it oh. on a Chinese okay. uh, Yuku or some someplace. I will try that. All right. Okay. Uh, if, I, if I can be successful in doing that. Uh, one more quick question here is, uh, I think that was when we are talking about uh, your greatest weakness or mm. something like that. I am a, I'm a global thinker always coming with big ideas and very often overlook details. So that's, is that okay to say something at like that? Or I'm very effective when I do one job at a time uh, to avoid to say I'm not multifunctional. Actually, I think those are both good answers. Yeah, I, I like those. Mm -hmm. I'm a global like thinker. I mean, everybody, you know, there are, I don't know how many different personalities, you know, if you look at it, any, you know, group of humans, there's a certain, you know, personalities, and I don't know whether like 16 different personalities or eight or something, right? And everybody has different gifts. There are people who are detail oriented, there are people who are just not, and they're, but they see big pictures, and they're super creative. So there's definitely value in, in every, you know, type of personality and the different skills, and we need everybody, but they need to come together to complement each other. So, yes. I think that's all the questions we have so far. All right, excellent. Um, oh, somebody asked about certificates. I don't know. The person mm, asked us three times about no, certification. Oh, no, we I don't. don't. Know what I mean, this is a, a free webinar, so we don't um, you know, have any testing process or anything or any sort of assessment to, to offer credit or anything. So um, at this time, we're not doing any sort of certificates or yeah, somebody asked about that last time too. Um, okay, um, I think that's all. Yes, and let's see, sometime next week, I will have the, the video uploaded. I'll send you the, the link for that and we'll send you some follow-up handouts as well. So, And then you'll have our contact information in there as well as, as some of the information we provided and the resources in case you'd like to check. Check out some of those websites. There are lots of websites online that has have many, many interview questions and many sample answers. I think that's it. That's it. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, everyone. So yeah. glad to see you here. And and, and um, we would love together. it if you would respond back and let us know if you want uh, other types of webinars. What what topics would you be interested in? What do you need help with? Let us know. Um, we're always looking for, okay, what's our next webinar topic? What do people need? So please give us some feedback as to what you would like and how we can help. Good night, everybody. <laughs> Bye, and oh. have a nice weekend for yes. people in China. <laughs> Bye. Bye-bye, <laughs> everybody. Hmm.